Well, it's not standard. It's just wrong. I mean, yeah, yeah but the, <laughs> the standard. Uh, yeah, they will look at when 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 you look at when someone else references the contango in copper, they will do the last cleared price of the futures the minus the last cleared price of the spot market, which could have occurred at different times. But that's what they call the carry. They don't differentiate between the D carry and the carry just like classical economics doesn't differentiate between the bid and the offer, okay? So, um, when, um, when he um, unwinds this position, he has a tendency, and I'm not talking about the D carry here, okay? He has a tendency to make a carry fall, okay? By, because he's selling apples at the bid, Sorry, the carry to, 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 to rise. Rise. Okay. So we go back to my um, previous picture. And you'll see that just before harvest, you know, that's where he makes the maximum profit from carrying it that's where he makes the maximum profit from unwinding unwinding the position okay now if you don't believe me and you think that this is all theoretical you can see that because the latent production is periodic sorry the production is periodic that the uh, the, 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 the carry should be periodic as well. I'm not distinguishing between the carry and the D carry here at the moment. And if something does have periodic production, it should have a periodic basis. And lo and behold, it does. Um, you probably can't see this, but the top chart here is um, the wheat basis. And you can, you can all come and have a look at this at some point. You'll all be given this anyway. Um, wheat basis here, 1981 to present, very, very periodic. And the copper basis, not periodic. Not periodic at all. So it's not just theory, it's um, practice, practice as well. Inventories have a big part to play in, in, the, uh, in, the move, in that movement of it, in the movement. No, but no, inventories are a consequence of the action between the spot and the futures market. They're not the cause of the spot and the futures market. You know, if, the, if there's a big carry that you can get from carrying something, that will induce inventory to rise at the warehouse. So it's not the other way around, you know. Inventories don't rise at the warehouse, inducing the carry to uh, to go up. It's it's the other way. It's the other way around. So the basis and the uh, co-basis, carry d carry, incorporate the uh, prevailing rate of interest. Why? Why would, the, uh, why would the prevailing rate of interest be incorporated into, into this? Time. Well, opportunity cost. Opportunity cost. It's nothing more complicated than that. Interest is a direct cost to the warehouseman, explicit or implicit, via his refusal to put the capital he'd be putting into the warehouse on deposit at the bank. Okay, so the rate of interest will always be involved in a warehouseable, warehouseable good. Right. Right, you'll be surprised to learn that there is no such thing as an Apple's futures market. Um, <laughs> That's because of New Zealand, <laughs> the southern hemisphere. Right. <laughs> 
But we've shown that it, it, this does work. You know, wheat has periodic production. I just showed you that. And the basis does tend to move um, in a periodic fashion. And we've gone through the basis, which is the difference between the offer on the future, sorry, the bid on the future and the offer on the spot, and the co-basis, which is the difference between the bid on the spot and the offer on the future. On the nearest future. Nearest future. Oh, talking about the nearest future. Um, Yes. Yeah. Could you say a few words, or there will be questions? Mm -hmm. So I should keep my question. No, you can ask me. Okay. Uh, how would an increase in the coal basis, or a decrease in the coal basis, affect the decision about the warehouse? Mm -hmm. So, um, Normally, um, or the positive and negative. Mm, mm. Um, so if the co-basis, remember the co-basis is basically, you can think of it as the premium to unwind your carry. And the basis can be thought of as the premium to carry. Now, normally you're not given a premium to de-carry something. You're not normally given, an, given a very large incentive to sell what you have in your warehouse and replace it and buy back your, uh, your futures contracts that are written against it, unless there is a time of real shortage. And real shortage would manifest itself, I'm not talking about gold or silver here, I'm talking about wheat, via a positive code basis. Okay, so if the co-basis is positive, that means that you're given a premium to get rid of the things in your warehouse. Because you need the space or because the commodity in question is... Uh... It's the commodity in question is, um, is, in, is in demand, is in rapid demand, and it's causing the... Um, it's causing the availability of spot, whatever it is, to contract. And it's driving the, the bid and the offer higher and higher and higher. The futures market just stays there. So co-basis eventually goes positive and the warehouseman can sell this at the spot market, sell his wheat that he's got in storage at the, at the spot market and buy back the future and he gets paid, let's say, a half a percent premium. Now, normally what happens is that that doesn't happen. Okay, let's just say this, okay. When he first carried the wheat, okay, he bought, let's say, wheat at $100 a bushel and he sold the futures at $105 a bushel. Let's just say it's a 5% carry for ease. If he, un if he wanted to unwind that trade right there and then, it might cost him half a percent. Okay? So, um, Yeah. 
is equal to um, 101 minus 104, which equals minus 3. Okay, so if he uh, bought spot wheat, sold the future, he'd get a $1 premium when it approaches expiry. But if he wanted to unwind it there and then, having done it, it would cost him three. It would cost him three. So he will lose to Camisa? No, no, no. It will cost him three. It will just cost him three. He, he only earns that at expiry. But it's not, it's not, you don't have to do both, you have to do either or? Um, okay. No, 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 I'm saying that you get that one dollar when uh, you hold it to expiry. Okay. You're buying wheat now, this, this is for delivery, let's say, in three months' time. Okay. Yeah. At three so months' time, and, uh, you will get one dollar. But you put in capital into this trade, you bought wheat, you've got a warehouse. You need to put more capital when you're doing trades on the futures markets. So obviously this involves capital, a very large amount of capital to earn not that large a return. But that's option one you can do. There's two different options. No, no, no. <laughs> but if he wants to, let's say he's got some school fees to settle, Okay, or a very expensive girlfriend. Okay, then um, he might want to unwind this ahead of him getting this. That's not, then, that would be the option. Then he looks at this. He says, "How much do I have to pay? How much will it cost me to unwind it?" And it will cost him three. So he has two options: either keep it yeah. or sell it, or unwind it, not sell yeah, it. Yeah, unwind sorry. it. Yeah. Okay. Now, this would be okay, so he's happy, you know, if he says, I'll earn one dollar in three months' time, um, just one uh, one dollar in three months' time, um, you know, I'm not being given a premium to unwind my trade, so I'm, I'm not going to unwind it, but as it comes to expiry, this co-basis might fall to, let's say, minus point. Two. Basis. Co basis. In which case he can unwind it for a profit, a marginal profit, not as much as a dollar point eight. Okay? Now, if the co basis goes positive, Let's say plus five. He's been given. He's been given a being given a huge premium to unwind that trade and uh, get rid of the uh, the wheat in the warehouse, basically. So normally that doesn't occur. You're not given a very large premium to unwind your your trade, but um, sometimes it happens. And when you have a positive co-basis, that's called backwardation. So backwardation is not the loose term that you've been sort of given in regular futures texts. You know, if the spot price is higher than the futures price, you have to be a bit more technical if you want to get down to the, uh, the, nitty, uh, the nitty gritty. Uh, how am I doing for time? Sorry, Oliver, you had a question. Uh, just one question. Uh, are you always using the nearest uh, future or the most active future contracts for doing this? Or sometimes you switch? You should actually look at it for all the futures contracts. Not just the near one, but the first five most active contracts. So it's big work. It's quite a... It is quite... No, it's not big. I mean... You do it in real time or in time frame is... You have to do it in real time, because a bid and an offer only exists in uh, real time. So you have software. <laughs> okay.
Uh, how are we doing for time? Have I? Five minutes. Okay. I'll also turn for coffee and I'll bring in the air condition. Okay, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> Let, let's adjourn now. <laughs> Everyone can absorb what's uh, <laughs> being said. And I can cool off for a little bit. So we'll take the coffee break now, I think. <laughs>